So it's no secret that a swim bait is something that is in everybody's arsenal 365 days a year and it catches absolute giants. But one place that people struggle to fish swim baits is in grass. And so today what I'm going to break down is I'm going to break down how to fish your favorite swim baits in grass so that it's going to help you get more bites and fish swim baits in a way you've probably never fished them before. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. So the reason that people fish swim baits more often than pretty much any other bait is going to be because of how actually lifelike they look. When you look at a swim bait, when you watch it swim in the water, it has that nice roll, that nice kick, no matter whose brand you throw, no matter what size, what color, it always seems like a swim bait just does the best job of representing a bait fish. And it's no surprise that it catches fish all across the country. It doesn't matter whether you're in California, whether you're in Florida, up here in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, it does not matter. If you're a bass and you swim in the water, you're gonna eat a swim bait. It's just plain facts. And the really cool part about a swim bait is how big of bites that it actually draws. It doesn't matter whether you're fishing a 2.8 or a 5 or a mag draft. Well, no, it doesn't matter what size swim bait you're fishing. You always have the potential to catch giant fish. And the cool thing is, is it works for all species. Whether you're fishing for smallmouth up on the Great Lakes with a small 4.8 it or 4.2 or you're throwing giant swim baits down in Florida or on the Cal Delta. You have the opportunity to catch giant species of bass and it's just something that's amazing. And when you combine that with the holding power that grass has, when you really think about grass and you think about how often there's giant numbers of bass that live in grass and the size of bass that live in grass, it can be truly just a remarkable thing to experience because there's nothing that holds fish more than grass. It seems like there's just always fish that live in it and there's always giant fish that live in it. And so that's what I want to break down is how to get those giant fish out of there using some of your favorite techniques. So a swim bait by itself going through grass is something that is extremely weedless. But the problem is people try to rig it on your favorite jig heads and with your favorite belly weighted swim baits and those ways will work, but they don't work to the extent that you need them to work. You know, when you're using a swim bait in that grass, you're relying on that drawing power to get those fish out of there, and you're relying on that natural kicking action for those fish to come up and track it and eat it. Now, when you're fishing some of these other standard ways of fishing a swim bait in that grass, you often get grass hung up on your bait without even realizing it, and that kind of takes away from that natural action that those swim baits are supposed to have. And so one of the most obvious ways that people fish a swim bait is going to be a belly weight. And whether that's an owner beast hook or this trocar belly weight, it's a way that you can fish a swim bait through grass really, really easily with it being weedless. Now you have one big hook, which is going to be ideal. And that's what's gonna be the key factor in all of these is you're going to have one big hook. And we all know that what that does to your hookup ratio sends it through the roof. So when you get a bite and you set the hook on it, it's coming to the boat. And so it's kind of important the gear you throw it on, which I'm gonna break down at the end of this video, so you're not gonna to wanna to miss that. But a belly weight is one of the first lines of defense that I go when I'm rigging a swim bait in grass. Now, a cool modification that you're gonna have with a belly weighted swim bait is going to be a flashy swimmer. All of these belly weighted hooks actually have a blade on the bottom of them in some form or fashion. And you can buy them with the blade or you can buy them without the blade. But what the cool part is, is that blade adds extra drawing power. And that's whether you wanna get a small Colorado blade on there if you're fishing a little bit dingier water with an algae bloom that's going on, or if you're fishing clean grass up north or on the Potomac River where they up a creek somewhere where that grass is really clean, then you can go to a standard willow leaf blade. But what that does is that adds extra vibration without actually changing the action too much of your swim bait. So when that swim bait is coming through the water, it keels it a little bit and doesn't give it as much roll, but you still get that natural tail swing and that natural thump. And you might be asking, well, why would I throw a swim bait in these situations when I could just throw a chatterbait or a lipless bait? Well, we've all been in a situation where you're throwing that chatterbait and you're catching fish, but then all of a sudden the bite stops or all of a sudden there's more anglers that show up on your spot. And the problem is, is that everybody reaches for a chatterbait or a lipless when they're fishing grass. It's just something that is worldwide known that when you're fishing grass, a lipless and a chatterbait do an extremely good job at catching fish out of there. And so the reason that I'm breaking down the different types of weedless swim baits is because it's a way to get bites behind people and to get bites in a crowd when those fish have really shut off 
or the conditions change, it slicks off a little bit. This is just a way that you can go back through those areas and still get a ton of bites while still giving yourself the opportunity at catching absolute giant fish. And so the next way that I wanna talk about rigging, it works when you're fishing extremely heavy cover. And that is going to be a Z-Man chin locks. It's the same thing as your standard screw in heads, like you've seen with the last two options that we've talked about. But the way that this chin locks work, if I can get this package open, but the way that this chin locks work is it has lead actually up on the nose of the bait, which actually comes out and protrudes a little bit and gives it a heavy stop. So you won't have the opportunity for your swim bait to fall off or to rip out of that screw lock, which is something I know every single one of us have had. So when you rig it up, now you're going to have an extra line of defense against that swim bait sliding down your hook. And so that way you can fish it through thicker cover a little bit easier and still get those big bites and still actually be able to fish it through there. One of the off the wall ways that people don't think about rigging a swim bait is actually Texas rigging a swim bait. This works really well when you're fishing it in extremely thick grass, when you're fishing a grass flat on the Potomac River or Florida, or when you're not actually able to reel it through there, but you still wanna have that natural presentation. You can actually just use a quarter or three sixteen ounce or half ounce and just Texas rig your swim bait. This way, when you're fishing it through there, you can still cast it out and just kind of worm it through that grass. And that way you'll still get your kick, you'll still get that natural action, but you'll do it in a way that nobody else, I guarantee you, is fishing a swim bait. And so you're still gonna get that same big bite aspect with that thumping tail through there, but it's just gonna be a different look. When everybody else is throwing worms and all these different creature baits and whatnot, you're gonna be throwing the most natural lifelike presentation through there. And so that's really gonna be an added bonus when you're fishing around a lot of people. Now probably my favorite way to fish a swim bait through grass is actually putting it on the back of a swim jig. This is a six cents divine swim jig right here. It has a screw lock on the nose of it, so it's gonna have that extra capability of holding that swim bait on there. But it just gives it a bulkier presentation coming through the water, and with that weed guard, it actually makes it fairly weedless. I throw this a lot in Florida, and I throw it a lot when I'm fishing shallow grass that you can still reel a bait through. And it is something that you get some giant, giant bites with, and it is something that I rely on when I know a chatterbait and a lipless have been overfished through an area because you don't have any vibration really other than the tail kicking and you don't have any rattles in there. And so it's a natural presentation that I can change the shape and the style of whether I wanna make it black and blue, I wanna make it green pumpkin to represent some bluegill, or I wanna fish a white one to represent a shad spawn. If you have a little bit dingier water, this is gonna do a great job at making that bait stand out a little bit more and actually get you some bigger bites when you're fishing through that grass. Now, as promised, I wanna talk about the gear that you're gonna throw this on a little bit. You need to take your favorite swim bait gear and beef it up. It's the same thing we talk about every time we talk about grass, is you have to throw some bigger line, some bigger rods, and a little bit faster or slower gear ratio reels. My go-to in grass is a 7.2 to 1 because it's gonna give you a little bit more torque while still being able to have that high speed capacity. And But what I'm gonna pair a lot of these baits with is going to be your braided line. This is P-Line TCB braid. We all know how well that braid cuts through vegetation is actually gonna save you a lot of headaches. And when you hook those fish, your line will actually cut through the grass to allow you to get them out of it, as opposed to fluorocarbon or monofilament that's going to wrap around the grass. So braid is going to be an absolute key when you're fishing around here. The one thing you can do is do braid to a fluorocarbon leader. And I wouldn't recommend going below 20 pound because once you get below 20 pound, you're getting into that breaking strain. Because like I talked about at the beginning, grass holds giant fish no matter where you are across the country. And so you can obviously scale this depending on where you're at and the size bites that you know you have the max potential to get. If you're fishing river fish, river smallmouth for grass, or in grass, then you can downsize it to like 30 pound braid, maybe a 10 or a 12 pound leader. But if you're fishing somewhere, you know you have the absolute opportunity to catch giants, I would be going 50 pound braid to a 20 or a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. But you really just have to know what size fish you're getting it into. But the same thing is going to apply to your rods, is you have to beef up your rods from your favorite swim bait gear. 
I typically like to throw my swim baits if I'm fishing open water smallmouth or just open water fishing a swim bait on a 7.4 moderate action swim bait rod. You know, medium heavy. But now that I'm fishing it in grass, I'm going to go to either a 7.6 medium heavy flipping stick or a 7.6 heavy action flipping stick because that's going to give me the ability to get those bites into the boat a little bit better and actually clean my bait when I'm getting it through that grass. Because as you're reeling it, sometimes that grass will get hung up on there and I want to have the ability to snap that rod and those stiffer rods are going to give you the ability to get those baits through that grass a little bit better which is going to be absolutely key when you're fishing it through that grass now one little bonus tip that i did want to offer you guys up is the ability to add a blade and what we have here is we have a screw lock hook connected to a swivel connected to a blade and that's something that's going to give you the ability to make any one of these rigs an underspin and so when you're fishing your favorite baits, if you want to add a blade to it, all you have to do is take one of these screw locks and screw it into your bait. And that's going to make any one of them an underspin, which is going to give you a little bit more big fish drawing power and which is going to give you a little bit better way to differentiate your bait from amongst the other bait fish that are in the area. So that's just one cool tip that you're gonna know about. So another bait that a swim bait really pairs well with when you're fishing it through grass is going to be a crankbait. And that's a bait that most people do not fish through grass. So up here, I'm gonna have a video linked where I talk about how to fish a crankbait through grass, which is gonna be a great way to cover a ton of water and really figure out where these fish are at. And so if you learned a lot today and you wanna learn a little bit more, go ahead and check that video out. Smash that subscribe button so that way you follow along with the content. But God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.